Hey, hey, okay. So um, here is a little demonstration of how I use the Stereo 3D plugin to enable me to make stereoscopic effects for 360 footage in After Effects. This is the plugin I use. It's not gonna help you with uh, shots with motion if you need to do a camera solve. For that, you're probably really gonna have to go into some 3D software like Cinema 4D and use something like Canvas 360. Um, but um, if you want to cheat stereoscopic uh, with using Element 3D, this works pretty good. It's a difficult VR workflow, as most of them are, but uh, let's get into it and I can show you how I utilize it. So I'm going to start with something very baseline. I'm just going to show you how this works. Stereo 3D does have some good tutorials on the AE Scripts page. Um, so I'm going to set up a two to one ratio project. So 5760 by 2880. We're going to get a solid. We're going to name that solid element. We're going to type a little bit of text that I can extrude. Then this is FX console. If you don't have it, you should get it. It's a great video copilot free plugin. Um, then this is kind of, I'm just burning through this stuff. So hopefully you understand element a little bit. So you extrude, throw in a little bevel on there. What I usually forget to do is I forget to put a camera in my scene. Stereo 3D toolkit needs a camera in order to work. So throw a camera in there, try and throw the camera in before you do a bunch of stuff like setting up where you want your particles or, or your text or whatever, because if you don't, it's gonna change as soon as you put the camera in. Worth noting now is that if you are using this with something like particular, or um, you are using particles and element, it will only create a 2D plane and it will make that 2D plane stereoscopic, but it's not gonna give you the depth. You're gonna have to use something like X particles and a real 3D, 3D piece of software in order to get that. Um, I've used this with particular, I've used it with form. I've gotten some pretty cool stuff out of it, but if you're really trying to create that 3D depth, you're gonna need something beefier. Now you hit new, create a new stereo 3D composition. You have your camera selected and the composition in your project. All right, you're gonna hit yes. Now it's gonna do a bunch of its work. And now you can see this one's marked LF. And there's gonna be another one marked RT, which is left and right or top and bottom. I use tab key a lot to get through these sort of trees. Your S3D, the basic S3D comp S3D, this one right here, this is where your stereo is happening. Now it has this 3D preview in there, but I don't use that because I'm gonna look at it in the headset. So I turn that off. Additionally, there's this yellow box where the display zero parallax is on. I turn that off as well. So now I have a top and a bottom or left and right. So what I would do is I would change this to a square image now you can see it's not, and then I'm going to have to move this to the top. So if it's 2880, it would be 1440. And if it's 2880, it would be 4320. So now I have a stereo pair. Now, and I can adjust the convergence and it will change the offset. So um, I don't mess with turning off the auto convergence because then it doesn't change for some reason. Um, but I select auto convergence and then I can do my convergence offset and that's how I can do it. If I go negative, that will actually sit inside your plate. But um, if you go positive, you can do it. Usually it's a very subtle difference, um, like plus four or plus six is gonna look like it's popping out at you. I can notice that last bit was not stereoscopic footage, and so it's not going to sit in an equirectangular format. So let's do a demonstration that shows how you would use it practically with 360 stereoscopic footage. So I have a little piece of footage uh, from a short that I shot called Racing for Pinks. This was shot on the Yee Halo, so it's, it's 5760 
by 5760 squared. So the first thing I have to do is I have to separate out the top and bottom. So there's gonna be a lot of pre-comps in order to do this. So I take my top right now is what I'm making and I'm gonna move it so that it's just the top. And then I have to bake this. So I make another pre-comp. Top, sep, and then I'm gonna put in a VR converter and I'm gonna change this to a cube map. Do a little adjustment. Now remember that the effect needs to be within this square, otherwise you're gonna see where it folds. So a lot of times when I've done bigger projects, I'll make a lot of these pre-comps with different effects on different layers. And it's cumbersome, but it works. Uh, so we're essentially gonna do the same type of demonstration that we did before. I'm making an element 3D solid. And you'll notice that again, I've forgotten the camera. Don't forget the camera. And then I'm just gonna put this bit of text in position. Now, if I was to make these adjustments on the camera instead of in element, those adjustments would get baked. And then if I made changes of placement and stuff like that later on, after I have done my uh, Stereo 3D Toolkit conversion, it, would, it wouldn't move the camera for me. So again, I'm doing the same thing, starting a new one. Stereo 3D is doing its work for me. And now I have a top and bottom split. So I'm gonna back out and show you what that looks like. Turn off the 3D preview. Turn off the zero parallax. Now I have two cube maps. They're, right now they're laying on top of one another. So I'm gonna go in here and in this layer what I would do so I'd take my VR converter and I would put it back to accurate rectangular footage. There we go. Now you can see that it is sitting in the accurate rectangular shot. Same thing with your bottom layer. Also, you wanna change it so that it is sitting back where your background plate would be sitting. The way I tend to do it is I tend to hit this invert rotation rather than doing a negative 118, just because it sometimes it seems like it's slightly off. Something about the way Adobe has taken the metal plugins and changed them, um, it seems like that works better for me. So now, this is sort of the master comp and I gotta change this to a square. And just like I did before, I need to move my top one up, and this would be 1440, and move my bottom shot down to 4320. Now you'll notice a couple of things with this. Right now, You'll notice these things at the top and bottom. That is its offsetting, and I don't want that. You'll also notice my top and bottom plates are actually still the top image. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna turn off the plates on my top and bottom. I do want my bottom plate to sit with my bottom effect. So see how that says top sep? I want that to be bottom. And this is where I use another plugin. It's called True Comp Duplicator. I believe it is free. And I will take the RFP top sep. I will search for top and I will replace with bottom. 
duplicate. So this way it's making everything separate. And then I'll just swap these out and go in here and move that and change it so that is the bottom plate. And then I'm actually gonna turn this off. Now this is just for reference. Um, for this bit of text, I probably wouldn't even need to do this, but for some more specific or robust effects, you're gonna need to make sure that you can see your top and your bottom and make sure it's sitting where it needs to. So now I've put in my background plate and now I have the text and the convergence. So now it can sit in the 3D scene. So let's say you need to make some changes to your extrusion in Element 3D. You'll notice that it doesn't auto update. The bottom is still the same. You have to hit this update button. When you hit the update button, it will update, but the layer moves behind the plate and then you have to readjust it to sit in the scene the way you want it to. But it's a pretty easy fix.